Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and with the final year-end lists already out now, I did the full 2023 in review, the best ofs, the worst ofs, they're out. It's time to take your hot takes on my own lists, and this video specifically, we are looking at the best of list. Best songs, best albums, best EPs, which should have made the list, which shouldn't have made the list in your opinions. Let's hop into it. MTV by Nightpunk, that moment when the 2021 track gets to 2023 lists. Yeah, um, that that was my bad. I didn't realize that MTV was released back in 2021. I thought it was 2023. I wasn't actively following Night Punk up to that point. And I got thrown off because there was an audio version. The music video came out two years ago, but the audio, like the official audio version came out with the album. So I saw that it was like, oh, like eight months old or something like that. And I was like, oh, great. This is like the song is from this year. It wasn't released earlier. And I was mistaken. My bad. Even though it was the honorable mentions, Effin's Cheap Thrills is easily my favorite of 2023. A creative, sonically impressive, and just an overall extremely fun ride from start to finish. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with this. I think the Effin Project is a great album. I think it's a great debut record. I just think it's fantastic all the way around. I just thought there was stuff that was better this year. Um, I think the I think this one actually didn't have as much replayability for me personally, and I thought maybe my only gripe with it was that the songs did sound a little too similar, I think, across uh, all of the whole track list as a, as a collective whole, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was great. Um, I This one, I think, would have maybe been like a number 12 or 11. The honorable mentions list isn't actually ordered, um, but I would say this is probably like 11, so it just, it just missed out. Great album just didn't make my top 10. Human was a good album, don't get me wrong, but the album of the year? Out of the first half of the album, before Move Ahead, only two catch my eye, that being MTV and Point. And on the back half again, the only two are Black and Colors and Nephilim's. Uh, both halves, especially the first half, are filled with tracks that just don't do anything. Whether it's the flow that doesn't click or work, uh, or some of the songs being too linear for me. I just can't say that it's the album of the year when most of the tracks didn't have the flair to stand out from the rest of the album. When tracks on Aetherborn, for example, have more depth and have an, a different idea or theme that you can't uh, that you can attach for each one that makes itself stand out. I I mean I disagree with this one personally. I think uh, as someone that doesn't really love the breakbeat style of music that was the Night Punk al Human album, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought all the songs yes sounded um, similar esque, but I think enough that it was they had enough differenti different differentiation between the tracks uh, while still being. Uh, sounding cohesive and sounding like it's its own thing. Chime Aetherborn, I get that. I think it's I've the other way around with with Chime's Aetherborn uh, in your comment here, and I guess that's where it comes to personal opinion. I I love the Aetherborn album. I think it was what my number four, something like that. But um, I just thought those tracks were maybe a little bit too on the same samey side. And I know there's tons of difference in them, but I just think it was just it was like a color base showcase of sorts, um, where Night Punk felt like a real thrown out like just like absolutely balls to the wall album that i just loved so um yeah i i get it i get it i do get it uh and i kind of like that uh that i <laughs> not as this is a little bit out of left field i think for a lot of people so um i'm still sticking by human being number one man cub before it gets better got snubbed big time definitely the strongest project by a considerable margin in the melodic space super infectious melodies fantastic production and just tens across the board musically i think this album 100 percent clears bridges between and it's not close the only thing that keeps people talk from talking about this album more is it's an eight track album easy one of the best projects to ever grace the scene wow that is a bold statement that I am wholeheartedly disagreeing with. Um, I thought it was good. I, I gave it a seven, uh, personally out of 10, but I just thought it was uh, better than your average uh, melodic dubstep stuff, your melodic thing. I just, yeah, I guess the, sh the short runtime or the short track length is does make it a little bit less talkable or, um, yeah, just less conversation around it. But to beat and clear bridges between, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I don't get that one at all. I think Bridges Between is a phenomenal record. I just don't know how you say that AU5 gets beat by Man Cup here. I just think, I don't think there's a world where that's a, a thing. Okay, and to follow this one up, uh, TKC says, slightly related. I also feel Bridges Between, as a melodic fan, is an overrated project. 
While the AU5 production is evidently there, it really lacks in the musicality department, in my opinion. Songs like Waiting in Paradise scratch that itch, but a lot of the songs tend to have rather uninteresting verses with lackluster vocals, uh, and the drops rarely let the melodies breathe, and instead just have unnecessary dubstep growl fills that significantly take away from the enjoyment of the drops at the time. They feel very incohesive and feel like they're just sound design experiments rather than a cohesive journey that explore the story with melody. I get that that to some extent but that's where i think the crux of your argument comes here is that i think the what you're looking for in purely melodic i think au5's bridges between is it like a, a pseudo melodic album i think it's primarily dubstep but i think it's like a mix between the the hardcore melodic dubstep and the more commercial melodic dubstep like a man cub and so i think that's the style that it's going for that it's it's not exclusively a melodic record which is what i think you might be having issues with here um and that's the the, the growls in between and the experimental sounds is what makes au5 so special it is what makes au5 one of the premier producers in the dubstep and melodic game is that he does that. He does the things that other people aren't doing. And to say to let it breathe, I think is an interesting notion because I get it. I get the not letting melodies breathe. I understand where you're coming from. I, I get the idea of just so much happening at once. But I think that's what AU5, and that's what he does better than anyone else, is he can add all these crazy tonal just nuts elements all throughout these just crazy synth runs, these crazy just everything and make it work quite well where a lot of other artists like I would say a man cub or like an Elenium or I don't know, even crystal skies, they, they have a more formulaic approach to this stuff. It's not that it's bad. It's just a more formulaic approach. And so that's where I think the crux of your argument comes from. So I understand where you're coming from, but still disagree. Alchemy, by disclosure, should have landed on the best albums list for 2023. No. <laughs> no, not at all. I, I don't see this in any capacity, uh, particularly because I just think that this disclosure record uh, was their weakest of their four. And yes, you can have your weakest of all your albums can be uh, still like land on top 10 lists if you're just goats, like disclosure actually is for the most part. But um, I just thought this one didn't have any real unique flair to it. I understand that the approach for this record was a more stripped back. It was a more just the duo, just going for it. No real vocal features, no real other production features. It's just the two of them going for it. I get that, um, but it still didn't feel like a classic tone that they were going for. It didn't feel like classic disclosure that I know that they had they said they wanted to do with this with this record. So I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was anywhere near uh, some of their other stuff and nowhere near the top tens uh, for this year. Not including Holonomi is Criminal. Yes, Vorsos, Holonomi LP. Um, I know I hear a lot of people talk about this one in, in some capacity, and I don't know. I just... It, First of all, it's long. It's long. It's what ninety-one minutes long, and I I get this the like super cool sound stuff going on all throughout, and these just like different the soundscape here and the sound design here and the production elements here and the quality here. Like I get that, but it just it just felt like a drag. It just felt like I yeah, and and without any real other production features and or vocals at all, it just kind of didn't really I don't know didn't land as, as well as I thought it could have. It, it's hard. I think it's really hard to do an album with that much length without having some other X factor to it where it's just your production shining the entire thing. I, don't get me wrong. I still think it's a great album. I, I scored it highly and, and thought it was thought very highly of the record, but I just don't think it, it, it's so hard to do just your core sound without anything else for so long and to make it so interesting so much more interesting than what it could be if just if it was just like a smaller album or an ep so um i i get the sentiment i hear a lot of people talking about vorso i liked it i just didn't think it landed in the top 10 too rough volume one is undeservedly extolled as being one of the <laughs> contributing stepping stones to bring in a new wave of appreciation of dnb into the mainstream spotlight of edm in the states um yeah i i yeah, sort of. I that was like one of the main points that I made in my talk about uh, Chase and Status's Too Rough Volume One is that it brought a new wave of of sound to of dr drum and bass sound to the West. Um, it was very uh, UK focused. It was very uh, European focused, and I just think that was my big thing to say that. And I still stand by it because I I don't think. 
I really don't think that there was that much of this sound being heard before in the West. I just don't think it was here at all. I didn't hear anyone doing it. And after this album dropped, people are talking about it more. They're talking about the style. They're talking about the artists. They're talking about this specific tone. And I just don't think... Um, I, I just, I just don't think that you can attribute that to anything other than this record. Um, and I think primarily Badadan as well. I think, I think it has to be that. And so I get that maybe we're giving it too much credit, uh, but I think it deserves it. Drew Lou's Art of Change should have made it onto the best albums list at least. Uh, y yes, to some extent, uh, Drew Lou's The Art of Change, uh, was really, really good, and it just missed my honorable mention spot. It was literally the the one I cut, where I, in my head I was like, uh, maybe this is maybe too many to put in the honorable mention, so I got rid of um, The Art of Change, but it would have been there. Uh, great record. I thought it was, a, it, it's a, it is like their debut, but it isn't because the first one was, was an anthology, and the first one was also the two of them, and now it's just the one of them, but um, I thought it was great. I just thought the the voice memos was just a little too much here here and there. I just thought the, the through line of the talking to yourself was just a little bit too on the nose for it to land for me. I thought there was some great, um, yeah, just experiments in, in sound and style and song structure particularly. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I just think it was a little too on the nose. I would have liked it to be a little bit more uh, niche and let the, let the audience really explore it on their own personally.